So welcome. I have a special guest with us here for our Greenlight for Girls Day. Um, and uh, we've had the pleasure to get to know uh, Paige for a little while now, but now we get a chance to introduce her to all of you. So before we go any further, then maybe um, Paige, you can introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Paige Castellan and I'm an electrical engineer and recently I traveled from Hawaii to the United Arab Emirates with the world's first solar powered airplane. This is such an amazing project. I mean, I'm sure we're not the only ones, but all of us at Greenlight for Girls were following your path and following your tweets and um, we couldn't wait to hear the news about the solar plane. Um, but first of all, maybe um, before we get to the solar plane, I know we'd be really curious to find out about the company you work for and also what you do there. Yes, Yes. so I work for the company Covestro, and Covestro is a world-leading supplier of high-tech polymer materials that are innovative and sustainable. Now, you could find Covestro products and things that you use every day. For example, if you have a pair of tennis shoes, the manufacturer might have used the adhesive to hold the parts of your tennis shoes together, and that material would have come from Covestro. We also have material in mattresses, in car headlamps, and even in mascara. Mm. Now, my job was to spend the first year of my work with Covestro rotating through the different parts of our company and learning about how we operate. But six months into that year, I saw that Covestro needed someone to support a very special project that they were an official partner of. And this was the Solar Impulse Airplane. We developed the material for the cockpit, the coating on the wings, and the plastic windshield for this airplane. This is so exciting. I mean, I, of course, also Greenlight for Girls knows uh, Covestro. And also some, I know a lot of people in the audience uh, already know Covestro as well, because uh, Covestro has been part of our events in the past. And we're always learning something new that Covestro does. Um, I was amazed to hear that um, you know, the materials on, um, on uniforms for sports and then also for the, um, for the equipment as well, building materials, the things that you mentioned, but especially this opportunity of um, being a part of uh, this new kind of invention, this new innovation for the world. Um, but first, maybe let's hear a little bit more about yourself because you got this chance, but what led you to this day? So what did you study and what kind of things were you interested in before you got to that point? Yes, so like I said, I'm an electrical engineer, and I got my degree from Virginia Tech. And when I was your age, I loved science and I loved math in school. But even more, I really loved art. And so I like to be creative and would always take my art projects one step past those requirements. As I got older, I realized that engineering was really the perfect fit for me because the engineering classes really give you this toolbox to take your creativity and your passion for art and thinking outside of the box to really solving problems that are everyday problems in our lives. And you can really build that brighter future once you have the foundation of an engineering, science, technology, or math degree. Fantastic. It's exactly the message we've been giving all day long. So this is perfect. But also, I'd love to hear that, you know, while you had your engineering degree, there were other interests that you were building and putting together, which for us, you know, makes for such interesting futures of anything we can get involved in. So now going back to this great project that you had, the solar plane, um, can you tell us a bit more about the solar plane? Of course. So I was an electrical engineer on the ground crew for the solar powered airplane. And it was the world's first airplane that can fly day and night only powered by the sun. Mm -hmm. And so you guys might be thinking, how can you fly through the night with a solar powered airplane when there's no sun? The engineers really worked hard to figure out the perfect balance. So we would go in, we would ascend all day. And then at night we would use some stored energy in the batteries and also glide down at night. So we would go up and then down. And the longest this airplane flew was five and a half days. So to make this even crazier, there was only one pilot in the airplane at a time. So that one pilot had to fly for five and a half days by himself over the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> definitely, definitely pretty adventurous. And I hope that you guys aren't intimidated by that and say, I want to do that too. So... But hopefully once it gets to be time for you all to be able to find your own 
um, innovative airplanes that it's not going to take five and a half days. So when the airplane landed, though, that was kind of one of my favorite jobs because as the airplane landed, I would stand on the side of the runway and I would have to actually run and then go and grab onto this bar that held that hung down from the wings of the airplane. And I had to make sure that the airplane didn't fall over. Ooh. So for this, the airplane had tan wheels, just like a bicycle. And when you're riding your bicycle, imagine what happens whenever you're not pedaling and you're not moving, you can fall over. And that's just like the airplane. So I had to be there to make sure that the wing didn't fall. So that sounds pretty scary though. Were you afraid? At the beginning, definitely whenever I saw this airplane that looked unlike anything I had ever seen before, I was so scared to even get close to it and touch it and mm -hmm. look at it. But I realized that that's going to be part of my job and being an engineer on the project. I needed to get comfortable with being afraid and willing to, yeah, get out of my comfort zone and actually work with the airplane. Absolutely. And I imagine that after the first couple times, it was just a little bit easier and easier each time. <laughs> yes. So I remember when the team and I were in Egypt and the airplane was landing, I remember we got on a pickup truck, we went out to the runway, and I'm just standing there in Egypt waiting for this solar-powered airplane to land, and I thought, this seems so comfortable, which I never thought I would be able to say in my lifetime. Right. If you can imagine, you know, when you were going through your studies, thinking about what you would be doing just a short time afterwards, this probably didn't go into your mind at all. Definitely not. <laughs> so um, with this great project and also the other things that you've done at Covestro, but especially with the solar plane, um, what are some of the things that you've learned? So the biggest thing I learned is really how important supporting each other is. Mm. Each time the airplane took off, we would all be so busy and we would be working for so many hours without a lot of sleep. And when you're tired, you're usually going to make some mistakes. And it was really important that we were supporting each other when we did make those mistakes instead of getting mad because that wasn't going to help us succeed. And also, having a supportive team really helps you stay confident in your abilities. I just graduated from college only six months before I joined this project, so mm -hmm. I didn't have as much work experience as other people on the team. But what really got me through whenever I was frustrated that I couldn't understand everything was having the team keep telling me, Paige, we understand, you got this, you'll understand, we'll help you learn. Mm. And I, I really learned from this experience that if you don't have that supportive team there with you, it's a lot harder to keep trying. Right. And I imagine, too, that you learn along the way that it's important to tell people that you need help and to ask questions. Yes, absolutely. And I even remember this from when I was in college where – Every semester, whenever I would start a class, and if I would fall behind, then I would just get a tutor. I would talk to my teachers, because mm -hmm. that's something I really learned. Whenever you're struggling through a class, that's where you're going to grow, because you have to go out of your way and figure out what you need to do to learn. Absolutely. And, and that's exactly, as you know, what we've been doing today is also having fun in that process of learning and not being afraid to ask, to ask questions and to not know something. Um, and that's exactly, it sounds like, what you've been able to do in your job. And nothing has kept you from doing anything else. In fact, it's actually given you more opportunities um, by doing so. Yes. And I even remember whenever I was really young and I was in school, I would sometimes be scared to sit in the classroom and a teacher ask a question. And I thought I knew the answer, but I was scared to raise my hand because I was scared of being wrong. Right. And then so many times it happened and I said, you know what, I don't know why I keep doing this. So I started raising my hand and I started participating more and I felt so much more happy. Right. So I encourage you all to do that. Right. Well, it's also great too for the teacher because then they understand what needs and what questions you may have um, and they can support you even more, uh, which is important. Um, all right, so then what have been your most favorite moments, especially these past six months? So we got to travel to so many places. Uh, we started in Hawaii, which was really, really cool. And then we went to places like California, New York, Spain, Egypt, and the United Arab Emirates. And one of my favorite moments, I think, was when the plane was taking off from Hawaii. 
because that was the first takeoff that I realized that this solar powered airplane was not going to land in Hawaii. We were going to cross the Atlantic Ocean and land in California. I was on an electric bicycle and we had electric bicycles for the ground crew where they would ride them at about 60 kilometers an hour and fall on the wing of the airplane as we took off. Mm. So if you could picture this, we were in Hawaii, the sun was just rising and we had the Hawaiian mountains and a nice Hawaiian breeze going and mm. I was going underneath the wing of a solar powered airplane as it was taking off. <laughs> and the airplane was pretty much no noise, you can just hear the propellers. And it was just such a exciting moment. And also I realized like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have to pack up, we're gonna have to head to the next location. So it was leaving that comfort of Hawaii and going to the unknown of California. Right, right. And also just not knowing this was the first time taking this flight. And, and you know, I'm sure you would have even felt even more uh, in, in a different way if you were the actual pilot in the plane. But still, that same feeling that everyone must have had on the team, waiting, waiting, waiting. Yes, yeah. And so there was a lot of times that, again, as a team, we had to be supportive and we had to understand each other and be there and be that support system because we all were kind of scared because this project was thought to be impossible. So when you're completing the impossible, you never know what problems you might come into. Absolutely. Well, and you know that one of our key phrases um, that we love to yell at the end of the event, in fact, we're going to do that very, very soon, um, goes just along with that message um, that anything is possible. We just have to put our mind to it and take on all challenges just head on and figure it out, um, which is great. So then one last thing, because we're going to um, – we're going to then see what questions all of, the, all of us in the audience have for you. But first, I just wanted to find out what's next for you. Do you know what's next that you're going to be doing? Yes. So I now have returned back to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I am working at Covestro at our North American headquarters. And I have some exciting projects coming up. So I am in our marketing department looking at future trends of the car industry so the mm -hmm. automobile industry and of course a big thing that everyone's talking about now is autonomous vehicles so I'm working to see how in 5 10 30 years materials are going to change in that autonomous vehicle industry so it's pretty fun and again a fun future looking project mm -hmm. and I'm pretty excited to see yeah all the things that I'll be able to learn from gaining this research. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, you know that you can call upon Greenlight for Girls, especially all these young girls in the audience, because I'm sure they all have brilliant ideas that they could pass along as well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say um, goodbye for, to Paige for a moment, and we're going to then see about some questions, and then maybe just maybe we can talk to Paige again. But first of all, Paige, we'd love to, we just want to thank you for your time. Um, being there in Pittsburgh while we're here in Brussels, um, it's great to have this chance to get to know you. Yes, thank you. And I'm glad that you guys are all attending this event because you are going to be those people in the future that will be actually inventing it. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Paige. Thank you.